Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. <clears throat> I really appreciate all the people that come to my channel and watch my videos. And I'm thankful for the comments that you make and for the suggestions or the re requests that you make. I really do appreciate it. So tonight I have a few items for you. This first one is titled, The Atlantic Compares Walter Kim to Donald Trump. Now, I don't know who Walter Kim is, but there was something in this article that I found interesting and I wanted to point it out to you. <clears throat> First, I'm going to read the opening paragraphs. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Atlantic churned out a paint-by-the-numbers hit piece on my friend Walter Kim this week, and yes, I'm pissed about it. Really, is there no end to this nastiness? The chief complaint of the blindness of elites, that's a book that he wrote, is that Walter, formerly well-regarded smart person, sp spends too much time complaining about elites instead of Donald Trump. <coughs> Excuse me. He cares less about, this is a quote from the Atlantic article, he cares less about Trump's rampage through American democracy or even the lunacy and violence of January 6th than he does about the selfish and self-satisfied elites, all noblesse, no oblige, who sparked that anger and sustained it. Of course, there's no mention of the lunacy and violence of the Palestinian protests. <laughs> uh, down here at the bottom of the article, there is one other line I wanted to read you. <clears throat> uh, this is referring to uh, Walter Kern again. He is perhaps the most salient example of a mainstream writer rejecting his past to throw it throw in with the populists. That's us, you and me. We're the populists, you know. The hoi polloi. The little people that are too stupid to know their, what there's, what's right for them. But this is the part that I wanted to point out to you. The to be mocked list is of the utmost importance to media. Most writers are insecure people who grew up without being especially popular. And most people in the industry get into it, at least in some part, because it presents them, excuse me, <coughs> it presents them with a new popularity hierarchy in which they imagine they will be one of the cool ones. And the easiest way to become an insider is through being especially vicious towards outsiders. Media relationships are defined by shared hatred. Can you believe how petty that is? I mean, that just... It explains a lot about the media, but I mean, my God, how can you be that petty? The second article I have is 23andMe's crash has exposed Americans' genes to big tech and the feds. Um, I, I put this in, I added this in or included this because if you're not aware, 23andMe was hacked and their data was exposed. And so if you have done a uh, test there, your data may be exposed. Hopefully they've notified you, but I thought I would alert you on that. The next article I have is titled, Violent Columbia Protester is Heir to an Ad Empire, Has a Mansion and Model Baby Mama, and a Long Rap Sheet. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. A violent Columbia protester is the heir of an ad mogul. One of the most violent leaders of the Columbia University rides is allegedly a professional agitator and limousine liberal, the scion of millionaire and execs who ad execs who owns in who owns in a three point four million dollar that makes no sense. The scion of a millionaire ad execs of millionaire ad execs who owns in a three point four million dollar Brooklyn townhouse, okay has a model baby mama and a stepmom dating John Cougar Mellencamp. 
James Carlson, a.k.a. Cody Carlson, a.k.a. Cody Tarlow, is a longtime anarchist, a high-ranking police source said. And he has a rap list as long as your arm. And he was involved in breaking into Hamilton Hall in Columbia. And he'll get arrested, or he already has been arrested. And Alvin Bragg will let him out and not charge him with anything or charge him with misdemeanors. And so it goes in the crazy world that we live in. Uh, it, it's absolutely insane, the world that we live in. <clears throat> and to prove it to you, the next article talks about Alvin Bragg. So, let's pull that one up. The title is, Alvin Bragg May Not Prosecute Pro-Palestinian Rioters Who Occupied Columbia University. <laughs> yeah. Manhattan attorney Martin B. R. Stoller told the New York Times Tuesday that protesters are unlikely to face jail time. NYPD Deputy Commissioner Kaz Doherty said during a press conference Tuesday that potential charges could include burglary in the third degree, criminal mischief, and trespassing for students inside Hamilton Hall, and trespassing and disorderly conduct for those in the encampments outside. The decision to bring charges is ultimately up to the district attorney. Many individuals at Columbia were outside agitators, not students, police said Tuesday. Well, that's true of every uh, protest on every campus. These protests are being organized and funded and paid for by quote, quote, outside agitators. If you want to be honest, they're Marxists and they want America to, to be destroyed. That's their goal. They want to destroy our country. And <laughs> the leadership of our country is going a long way towards accommodating them. So that's the news for today. As always, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy, that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.